This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Moto G from Motorola. This is a very affordable, unlocked GSM phone that you can buy for just $179. No contract, no carrier involvement. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Moto G and some of its accessories. It's kind of cool, you know, usually a budget phone doesn't get a whole lot of accessories, but we're going to start off talking about those right away. First off, Moto G, $179, no contract, Android smartphone, pretty nice. And it has a basic black back. A little boring, right? Especially after the Moto X with all of its customization. Well, you can choose from six different colors for these snap-on back covers right here. This one's called turquoise. There are six. There's black. There's something called chalk, which is sort of like gray. There's regular blue. Uh, you get the idea. There's a pretty zingy lime green. And there's also these kind of cover cases, sort of like what Samsung uses. And this has a textured back on it. You can hear it when you rub your fingernail on it. Clips on, replaces the existing back. Has a flip cover on it. Nice soft felt on the inside. Covers the case. It's got a magnet. Not a really strong magnet, but then it'll cover the display and it'll also wake it up when you open it up. 35 bucks for these flip cover cases, or shell cover cases, they call them. And just the shell, they're $15. So not too expensive, which is good, because the phone's $179. You're not going to be spending $40 bucks for a back, are you? One thing I will say about just the stock black back it comes with, I like the feel of this the best. It's nice and rubbery and really grippy. It feels kind of quality. Now, if we look at this phone, it looks a lot like the Moto X, which is a good thing because that was a very attractive phone. 4.5 inch display on this, so it's about the size of the iPhone 5S. That means it's very pocketable, but you do get a half inch bigger display. It feels great in the hand. Nice curves on it. Doesn't look like a cheap piece at all. So that's what pre what's pretty neat about the, the Moto G. Not only do you not have to get involved with contracts on this. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a really decent Android smartphone. 179 bucks. And better yet, say that's for the 8 gig model, right? You want 16 gigs? Not a problem. This is an Apple. This isn't going to be a $100 upcharge. It's only 20 bucks to go from 8 to 16 gigs. You can imagine how few people are probably going to be buying the 8 gig model then, right? For 199 you get 16 gigs more storage. And that's important because this does not have a SD card slot. Google, who owns Motorola, they hate removable storage. They think it leads to instability, user confusion, all that stuff. So you're not going to get it on anything that's from Google. And speaking of Google, this is very much like a Nexus device. Clean Android build. The Moto Hansons that are on the Moto X, cool as they are, the things like the active notification system, the fact that you can say uh, issue voice commands at any time, even when the phone's off, you don't have that here just straight vanilla Android. And there's less processing power inside to handle it. It doesn't have those dedicated DSPs to do those nifty things either. So if you do want to swap those backs, since we've been discussing it, it's going to be a little bit of a battle. It's funny, usually the backs on phones are easy to take off. There's no yank point. You're supposed to use the USB, micro USB hole right here, and grab it. And you can start to get it off. But the thing is, usually once you do that, you know, they, they pop right off. Now this guy, you've got to really work it gradually around the sides. And we'll do that. And we're still yanking and we're working it and we're being nice to it. We don't want to break it, although it feels pretty sturdy. Don't think it's going to break. Still working it. Got it going now. There we are. So it takes a little bit of patience. Happily, this is not something that you're going to have to do very often because there's really no point to taking the back off. Right here we have our teeny itsy bitsy little SIM card. We have the battery that is sealed. It says, do not mess with this. Do not take this out. You will mess things up. And I think they're probably true. No SD card slot. So there you go. You're probably not going to be taking this off unless you want to put one of these cool accessories on. Here. So we're going to put the cover with the flip on first so we can see how that looks and operates. Very easy to get it on. It's funny. It's hard to get it off, but it's easy enough to get it on. So there it is. Nice, more colorful look. Open it and it wakes up the device. Still have to slide to unlock, of course. And when we do wake it up, we see 4.5 inch display, 720p, 1280 by 720 resolution. That's 329 ppi per pixel density. So you've got a very sharp screen here. And honestly, for a device this small, full HD is kind of overkill, given the fact that, well, obviously you've got super high pixel density already. Colors are nice and bright. You can see from the default desktop right here, nice rich colors. This is maximum brightness right now. It does not get any brighter. This one thing, it's not a very bright screen. It's not the greatest for viewing outdoors as a result because it doesn't get that bright. And if you're in a really bright room, you're going to be like, hmm, auto brightness must be too dim. And then you're going to say, oh no, it's just, just not that bright a display. For average indoor use, it's fine. 
soft buttons down here. There are no hardware buttons, so they take up a little bit of that screen real estate. Not going to complain about that. On the side over here, we have our power button, our volume controls, very standard stuff right there. On the bottom, our micro USB port, microphone hole, top. 3.5 millimeter audio jack, another microphone hole. That's it for our port. And now we've jazzed it up a little with the turquoise back. I think that looks pretty nice. Again, it really has a kind of Moto X feel to it with the bright colors and you got the black face on this. It's going to be a black face, not a white face. And for those of you who are curious to see it next to the iPhone 5S, here it is next to the iPhone 5S. You can see that it's just a little bit bigger. Really easy to hold and manage, certainly. Just like the Moto X was, too, for that matter. So as I mentioned, this is running a very clean Android build. This is Android 4.3 KitKat. It's supposed to be coming, hopefully, soon. And they promise that you'll get OS updates quickly, as, as long as the hardware can support it. And, aha, that's where we get to, well, when you buy a phone for $179 or $199, no commitment, you're not going to get the top-end hardware. This is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 CPU inside. That is a quad-core, but it's 1.2 gigahertz, not the fastest CPU. This obviously is not meant to compete with things that have the Snapdragon 800 or even the 600 in it, or even the Moto X CPU, which has a faster graphics processor. This is a Adreno 305 graphics, so not the sharpest knife in the drawer. However, it's perfectly fine to use because, well, it does run very clean Android. There's not any bloatware on here to slow things down at all. Adequate application launch speeds are generally good, except for big 3D games. You'll notice that they take longer to launch. As you can see, the phone looks pretty cool. It has some pleasing curves on it. Again, you would mistake this for the Moto X. They look that much alike. But back to performance. On Quadrant, it scored 8,485. On Antutu, 17,396. Not bad numbers. Uh, about half the number, number that you'll see on the fastest Android smartphones. But again, this one costs less than half of those. For the 3D Mark iStorm Extreme Test, it scored 2,778. That Adreno 305 graphics is not going to get you great numbers there. For the Graphics Bench 2.7 score, we use the Egypt 2.5 off screen test, 16 frames per second. Lastly, Sun Spider, that's the JavaScript test where lower numbers are better, 1311. The fastest phones are scoring in the 400, 500, up to 800. So 1300 is a little slow, but it's still way faster than the Android phones from about a year and a half ago, even the flagships. Battery is sealed inside this guy, 2,070 milliamps. That's plenty of battery capacity. It's not so far off from bigger phones with faster CPUs and much bigger displays. And aha, that leads to another reason why this is inexpensive. This has 3G. It does not have 4G LTE. LTE is a big consumer of power. So you have a 720p screen that's pretty small, a fairly middling CPU, and no LTE. You don't need a whole lot of battery here. No problem getting through the day, even if you use this thing heavily, to be honest. Speaking of LTE or the absence thereof, it does have 3G HSPA plus 21 megabit per second. It doesn't have the 42 megabit per second variation. It does support a whole lot of bands, so that's good. You can use this on T-Mobile, you can use this on AT&T. This is a GSM phone. Even though Google lists this as supporting CDMA, EVDO, Rev A, 3G, there is absolutely no way to authenticate on the network because Sprint and Verizon use LTE networks to do the authentication. So until they come out with the version for the U.S. that supports CDMA, you're talking about GSM carriers only. You can use this overseas, you can use this in the U.S., but you can't use this on Sprint and Verizon, at least not this version, which is GSM. Other things that are missing, no NFC here. And almost always on smartphones, we see dual band Wi-Fi, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. This has 802.11n on the 2.4 gigahertz band only. That makes it single band Wi-Fi. And there's uh, no wireless display, no mirror cast on this, probably because that usually requires dual band. So again, it's a budget phone, something got to give. Build quality is really great on this. Software is good on this. So you're going to lose those little extras. Has a front video chat camera, and on the back we have a 5 megapixel camera with LED flash. Been a while since we've seen 5 megapixels. Again, another victim of the budget crunch, shall we say, to make this affordable. It's not a bad camera, actually. It can take some reasonably sharp and colorful shots. Um, better out of the gate, actually, with capturing colors than the Moto X was before it got a firmware update. But it is only 5 megapixels, and it is not the fastest focuser, that's for sure does have HDR mode and that can make quite a difference in helping shots out. We'll take a quick look at the camera UI now.
And it has little hints for newbies here. Settings, gallery tells you to swipe in sideways, which is a good thing. Otherwise, you probably would be completely wondering how the heck am I going to operate this. Swap your cameras front and back over here. Switch to video recording mode right there. So very simple UI. And then here we have my not real favorite thing here. Google circular UI for camera control. So HDR automatic right here. On, off, auto are your options. Flash control. Controlling focus and exposure using your finger. Slow motion video recording. Panorama. So pretty basic stuff. So let's take a picture of it. And obviously we have a non-moving subject there. It's pretty quick. If we move around, it's doing pretty good right now. But trust me, I was out and taking some pictures about it. And sometimes it could be a little bit slow to focus. And there's the picture we just took. It has almost a slightly Instagram-y look to it. It's kind of interesting there. And here's some pictures taken at a big box store. Not too bad. I mean, those are colorful bottles. We have a reasonable amount of color, but not super duper saturated either. Reasonable sharp sharpness for 5 megapixel. We can actually read the labels on those bottles. So again, for the money, not a bad camera. Obviously, it's not going to compete with the Samsung Galaxy S4 or even the Moto X for a camera in terms of resolution, but it's, it's not too bad. And other than a little focus lag sometimes, it does a good job and it handles macro pretty well. It had no trouble me being that close to the bath toy and taking a picture. Now, as I mentioned, there's no carrier blown on here, obviously, because this is not sold through carriers. You can buy it direct from Motorola on their website. And you've got all the standard Android applications in here. Obviously, I've downloaded every benchmark program under the sun to test this guy. But we've got an FM radio application. We actually do get FM radio here. Plug in some wired headphones to use as an antenna. All the standard Google applications. Maps, by the way, this is a GPS with GLONASS built in. Navigation, Google Hangouts, Chrome Web Browser, Google Translate. All sorts of stuff on here. Google Play Games, Google Play Books, Google Play Magazines, all the Google Play stuff is here, and the Google Play Store. And we have Motorola Migrate, in case you want to migrate, migrate your settings from another Android smartphone, which honestly usually isn't necessary because you can have your device synced to, to Google anyway with your account, so all of your settings and your apps can come right back down anyway for switching phones. Still, it's there. Now, the speeds that you're going to get in terms of... Uh, 3G data speeds really depends on your carrier. This one has an AT&T SIM in it, and we've gotten speeds ranging from 6.5, which it looks like we're going to right now, down, and generally about 1 megabit per second up, because they cap upload speeds in favor of download speeds, and so does T-Mobile do the same thing. You know how your GSM carrier does in your area, so you can expect as much. Again, HSPA plus 21 megabit per second, not the faster 42 megabit standard on here, no LTE, but certainly good enough to load pages quickly enough and to stream YouTube video. That's enough speed to do that kind of thing. Call quality on the phone is good. It has the standard Android basic dialer on this, and volume is average among GSM handsets and Voice quality on both ends is quite good. Even in the noisy big, big box store, it didn't transmit too much noise and it didn't sound too digitized either. Now we'll load our website, which is not cached on this. Other than Google's pre-caching of URLs, of course. And we're doing this over the 3G network. Not as zippy as LTE. It's going to take a couple of seconds to load there, but still not too bad. And this is the full desktop site, not the mobile optimized site, so that's going to add a little time on. Also, what has to do with it is the rendering speed available thanks to the CPU and GPU, and again, this is not the super fastest guy on the block. Once you do have it loaded, pinch zooming, pretty smooth, not as zippy fast as we've seen on some phones. And we'll do our usual YouTube video test to see how it does, and we'll watch our video of the Nokia Lumia 1520. Speaker is not wildly loud either compared to some other phones. This is Lisa 
Lisa from the Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at Nokia's first fab fabulous phablet. This is the Lumia 1520, a 6-inch Windows 8 <laughs> smartphone. Available and the audio and video are going to have to get back in sync. It'll take a minute after full screening it. With. This one is glossy. We'll pause it and see if we can get them back in sync again. The others are matte finish. It's available in matte yellow, matte white, and matte black. And in the United States, it's exclusive to AT&T. And, we're gonna and now we're caught up with the lip sync. So here it is. We're in the days of living large, aren't we? Look how big this phone looks in my rather large hands. This the phone certainly has enough processing power to play back video streaming from YouTube on it. And as you can see, the data connection now here in the U.S. we're used to having LTE, but it's adequate for doing this. You might hitting the pause and then the play button will take care of that problem. The phone is certainly fast enough to play anything other than the most demanding game. Something like Asphalt 8 is not going to be ideal. The frame rates won't be super smooth on this, but something like Dead Trigger, certainly those games that are optimized to run on a variety of hardware well. It's just the really top killer games that really depend on high-end CPU power. You might see some lag on this, but for everyday use, it's fine. And so that's the Moto G. Looks a lot like the Moto X. Obviously, it doesn't have all the features inside. One thing we really like is the removal back, so you can customize it. You, know, you don't have to just order it in one color and say, well, I'm really tired of teal blue after a while. You can switch it up if you want. You can get a flip cover case. But the best thing about it is how affordable it is, and it's a name brand product, so you're not buying some off-market thing that you found, and you're just worried about how well it's going to be supported or work. You're getting something that's basically like a Google Play device right here. It's going to have have updates available quickly for the operating system. Name you can trust from Motorola. It doesn't have all the top dog features, but if you don't need them or can't afford them, it's definitely a good choice. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website to read the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.